hell? That ain't good. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Uh, looks like we got an unexpected project today. My brother-in-law was uh, trying to leave the deer stand and go back to his house for lunch and discovered that his John Deere Gator here behind me would not start. So we're gonna tear into this thing, see if we can figure out what's wrong with the starter and whether or not we can uh, fix it or get the parts to fix it. So come along for the ride and maybe you'll learn something and maybe you'll get to laugh at somebody else's misfortune. John Deere, that is an absolutely horrible prop design to hold this bed up. One, you can't leave it in place and slide in that slot and close the bed because it bends it. And two, it doesn't hold the bed up very far. What we need to try to fix is a starter right there. That is the solenoid on top of the starter. The main starter motor is actually down below that. And the way this thing is put together, there is the bolt boss where it's bolted to the bell housing, for lack of a better term, on this thing. And the bolts come through from inside this fan housing that goes around the Reeves Drive to drive this thing. So what we've got is a series of 10 millimeter bolts all along the perimeter of this that we're gonna have to take apart to get inside of it and get that starter loose and then try to get it out of that really tight hole that it's in and see if we can figure out what's wrong with it. First thing we need to do is take this breather off of the cover for this Reeves drive. So we get that out of the way. All right, that was easy. We'll leave that one loose, but holding it together at the top so we don't have too much stuff moving around. Throttle cable. Yeah. Let's take this uh, stupid prop rod off of here to get it out of our way and then probably straighten it. They don't make it easy. I swear, people that design things should be forced to put it together and take it apart and put it back together before the design is approved and it gets put out into the public. People who put these things together must have the teeny tiniest little hands on the planet. They're like little baby hands. I 
There we go. This winter sun makes it hard to see, but it also makes it hard to film. Ah, well, first world problems, right? All right, there's one more buried up in there. How do we get to it is the question. Uh, there it is right there. Where is it? There it is. what happens when you let people design things that don't work on the things and they didn't say hey if I need to work on this all that stuff's in the way how do we figure on working on that so I'm gonna tell you what if you just had a basic socket set and set of wrenches you'd be hosed They probably just put this engine in here without the bed on as a complete unit set it down in the middle of the frame with no intention of ever doing this. Okay. So. If you don't know what I was talking about when I said this was a Reeves drive, the way this thing works, and what size is that? Is it the ubiquitous 10 millimeter or is it something else? It is 10 millimeter. And so is that one. Hello. Ooh, I don't want to drop that socket down in there. <clears throat> I don't want to drop that dang bolt down in there either. Oh, oh, you don't talk about luck. It's better to be lucky than good. Good Lord, King Kong put this thing on. If all else fails, get a bigger lever. Was it Archimedes, I think, said? With a big enough lever, you could move the world. Now I'm gonna bust a knuckle. Archimedes, he's an interesting fellow. He invented a lot of stuff. He invented a water pumping system that's still used in a lot of places in the world. Works with a a screw or an inclined plane that's used to move water from one elevation to another. All right, is that loose? Yes. Before we start taking a whole bunch of stuff off completely, 
I'm gonna try to loosen this coolant crossover tube. There's an eight millimeter bolt here, and there's another one down here. I'm going to try to take loose and see if we can move this out of the way far enough to get that starter out of there. The power cables are still connected to it, so I don't know if there's enough slack in them to get it out of that hole or not. I'm hoping so, but we're going to try. like it's about four miles long. I really don't want to drain all of the coolant out of this thing. Or at least the stuff on the top. Because it'll make a mess. And soak into the ground because you're not going to catch it all. That's not going to be enough clearance. Keep knocking y'all around. Of course, this is pretty tight confines to try to do anything in. Well, it's probably going to get all over that belt. I'm going to have to try to clean this slick mess off. Or maybe not. Well, a little bit. Not too bad. <clears throat> All right. Of course, that's awful hard on the throttle cable. They do not make these things to be worked on. I had to show you what the problem is here. I don't know if you can see, but the entire nose assembly is broken off of that starter. So that means there's nothing holding that end shaft in place when the spur gear comes out and it tries to engage and start this thing. So the starter is going to have to come out and be replaced. Now we just got to figure out how to get it out. All right. So there's our problem. You see that whole piece is broken off. Now we're going to have to see if we can get one ordered. Well, I guess we'll come back to this when I've got a new starter. Here's the old starter and the replacement starter. If you find yourself in need of one of these things, you can get them at your local parts store if it's a good old fashioned parts store. You're not gonna get it at a big box store, you know, O'Reilly's, AutoZone, one of those. They're not gonna carry it. We checked Amazon and Amazon was a little cheaper than the uh, local parts store, but there was a two week lead time. I got the one from the local parts store the next day. So if you need one of these things, you might want to try that new part number at your local parts store. I'm going to try to get this new starter in here, get it mounted up, and put everything back together and see if this thing's going to run. We will be trying it before we put all these covers back on though. Hopefully, this is going to be the plan. Well, that went down in there. Let's start.
I'll grab a couple of alignment punches to see if we can get this to line up. Of course, you can't see anything because the frame's in the way. There we go. Now let's see if we can get number two started. We need to put this back on as tight as it was before. Oh, and I mentioned Archimedes and the lever and Archimedes water pump, the Archimedes screw. And I was trying to think of what in our modern Western society you'd be most likely to see that was an Archimedes screw device. And if you've ever seen a screw type or auger type conveyor system like they use in a feed mill, that's an Archimedes screw. They just use it for dry products instead of water. Should you find yourself curious and interested. All right, let's put these wires back on. See if I can drop this nut and or the lock washer down into this mess. And if y'all don't have one of these little telescoping magnet on a stick, you should go get one because they are extremely useful. I can get this washer out of here. Ah, see? Very useful. Tie up these so I can get them back down in there. ratchet so we don't can get it in there one but two so we don't get too much torque on it because those little lugs sticking out are just copper if you use too much torque on it you'll twist them off and then start this process all over again There's that. Put the little no shocky boot back on. Now we get to argue with that coolant crossover. taking that off and see what happens. Well, that wasn't near as tight as I thought it was going to be. Hmm. It's almost like somebody had that off before and didn't tighten it back. But that's a pretty handy trick right there if you got something that you need to get in and drive a screw these quarter inch bits quarter inch socket six pointed socket works good that might need a little loctite on it when it goes back or at least uh, make it tight 
because that was barely finger tight. Oh, did that give us enough room? Boy, this throttle cable is just trying to irritate the fire out of me. Close. I'm going to have to move that. Let's see if I can get that out of there. The other thing that I have found unbelievably useful is those little magnetic trays to put parts in. With the hose on there, you can't get that spring clamp open far enough to get it past the bead rolled on the end of it. slack to get that ow, past there. Come on. Supposed to be five mile an hour winds with 10 mile an hour gusts today. And I think we're doing about eight to 10 with 15 to 20 gusts. Good thing I didn't start a brush pile burning. stubborn either. There's that. Quite sure what that little roller is supposed to provide here. Oh, I guess it's a pivot. It goes up under there, hits that, and then the throttle breaks on over if you keep putting your foot in it.
strikes me as a system that may be a little overly complicated. Hell, I'm gonna go put my foot on the throttle. Y'all tell me if it works. Looks like it. Put this coolant hose back on. At least somebody had sense enough to use a actual radiator clamp on this one instead of those stupid spring clamps. Of course, I'm going to have to find the coolant reservoir and see how low that is. And something else I was thinking about. All of those parts off of that starter had to go somewhere. So I think I'm going to need to break this back cover loose and see if there's any pieces in the bottom of it. Oh, and of course there's bolts all the way around this thing. Is that a plug? And also, can't tell if there's anything in there or not. Need a tool, make a tool. Let's see if we can get this behind that pulley and see if we can feel anything in there. Well, that's interesting. I don't feel anything in there. So where did that stuff go? the edge of the flywheel. Well, I guess there ain't nothing to it but to do it. Let's see if it'll start. And let's see if we hear any kind of crazy racket. Apparently, according to John Deere, you do not lubricate those flyaways. They are supposed to run dry. So, cover back on, and then put that evil prop rod back on here, and I guess this will be done. in that quick before it jumps off of there. I need to get a couple of those little palm ratchets. Make this kind of stuff a little easier. Always makes me nervous screwing steel into a brass boss, at least I think they're brass, they may be zinc, down here on this bottom. But uh, either way, it's softer than steel. If you get it cross-threaded, you will chew it up in a heartbeat. This is one of those things, too. I always try to get everything started before you tighten the first one fully tight. Because as soon as you do that, it's going to throw something out of whack and you're not going to be able to... Get the next one started. Go grab my 10 millimeter U joint socket. Makes uh, sometimes makes this kind of stuff a little easier. Make 
No, people badmouth Harbor Freight all the time. Deservedly so, I would say, based on their reputation. But since uh, every dang thing else pretty much being made in China now, there's not really much incentive to go pay crazy amounts of money for stuff like these wrenches that if it breaks, you take it back and they give you another one. Just like Craftsman or Snap-on or whoever. And, you know, I'm not trying to make a living with these. They're just tools. So if I'm out in the pasture and lose something, it doesn't hurt my feelings too bad like it would if that was a $40 Snap-on wrench. Now we need to put the hateful prop rod back on. And the breather for the Reeves Drive cover. And that should have this done. This dang evil prop rod. I can even remember how the stupid thing went on here. Hmm. Oh, it goes up here, dummy. that all right that stupid thing's back on now I'm just really not sure how it's supposed to work. I mean, doesn't make any sense that it just float there. Seems like it should fit in that notch and slide back and forth, but then it hits this catch for the latch mechanism and bend. I don't know. I didn't design it. If I had, it'd be designed different. I was looking at this thing, and despite my disparaging remarks earlier on about people who design these things, which most of that still holds, I figured surely to God people weren't complete idiots. And these frame rails are the same frame rail from side to side. This notch on this frame rail is on the inside of the other frame rail. So if I move that prop rod from that side to this side, it should work the way it's supposed to work. So we're gonna give that a try and uh, see if we can straighten out this mess. Now, it's also been my experience that the stupidity of the average human knows no bounds. So, I could be incorrect in my assumption, but we're going to see. Well, that part seems to fit. Now, I wouldn't be talking about the viewers of my channel when I say the stupidity of the average human, because clearly you're smarter than the average human because you're viewing my channel. But there are others out there who aren't that smart. Okay, those are self-tapping screws, or bolts rather. Since that's bent from being on the other side, we need to bend it in so it'll work on this side. Ta-da! Well, I'm glad that worked. This 
breather hose back on. Well, that's pretty good. The only two leftover parts are the nuts off of that original starter. So I guess we got it all back together. Hopefully where it belongs. Well, that looks like we got this thing fixed. I'll close the bed up and take it back to my brother-in-law and get my side-by-side -side back. Thank y'all for hanging out with me today and finishing up this project. Took a little longer than I would have thought since we had to look for a starter. But uh, hopefully you found this useful. Maybe it'll help somebody else not have as much problem as I did figuring out how to get that starter off of there. Y'all have a good day.